I came in here to turn on the lights in here, the grow lights, and I thought everyone was sleeping because they were incredibly quiet when they started hopping around as soon as I walked in. But it's only been a couple of days since I recorded the video about them, and look how big they are. I know that they are designed to grow quickly, just like the broiler meat chickens, but it's mind-boggling to me just how quickly these little turkeys are growing. They look so good. Um, and then I need to turn on the grow light. So last night, uh, they filled their feed with shavings again, and I was having the time of my life trying to open this feeder. I guess I need to soak it in water. What I'm thinking is that the feed got stuck inside of the edges, and it's kind of glued it shut, which is weird, because <laughs> we feed them every other day, um, but we're having it clean this out almost every day. So luckily I had another feeder just hanging out in here, so I went ahead and gave that to them. But enough about the baby turkeys. I'll do an update in about a week or so because I feel like every week there'll be some pretty big milestones as fast as they're growing. Right now I really wanted to highlight all of the seedling growth because I showed this when I made my video about the baby turkeys and just the overall home set update look at how big they are these are all okra right here so these are the burgundy okra i'm really excited about that because so far i have a lot of heavy hitter um clemson spineless okra planted i got or these burgundy to kind of give me a different color the last couple of times that i've grown okra it's been clemson spineless variety and so it's just plain green nothing special nothing exciting i thought it'd be really cool to have some different color seedlings. So I got the red burgundy and when the orange jean okra at Baker's Creek came back into stock, I got that. So now I just need the pink Okinawa okra, okra and I will have four different colors. I wish there was a cool yellow okra or something like that. I would like to experiment kind of mixing different varieties of okra with colors to get some traits. Wouldn't it be cool to have like a burgundy or an orange jean heavy hitter okra, that would be absolutely mind blowing. Um, imagine a beautiful orange or red okra that produces 250 pods in a season. That would definitely make it easier for people who have less space to grow three or four okra plants and just have plenty for their entire household. Um, me, however, I like to do things in extremes. And because I live in an area that has clay soil in Southeast Texas, what I know is going to grow well without having to do a lot of work are vegetables that love dry heat, humid heat. I mean, did I mention heat? Definitely loves heat. And that have that taproot that can reach well into that clay soil and pull up water during our driest season. So that's why okra is a big one for me. Another thing that I really love growing is dill. That is an easy plant to grow. Um, and I love making my own seasonings. I especially want to do it for pickles and ranch this year. So I did get some mammoth dill, which I didn't need the seeds because I have a ridiculous amount of dill from just the regular dill that I grew one year. But I want to try the mammoth dill. I'm interested to see how big that will get considering my regular dill got well over five and a half, six feet tall. It was definitely taller than I am and I'm just under 5'5". Five five. So these are all okra, every last one of them. I planted about two seeds in each one so most of these have actually shot up. On one or two I think I planted three seeds but you can see they've already come up. What I do is I turn this on when I wake up usually but this morning I was up at 4 30 and I gave up on trying to go back to sleep so I went ahead and waited until eight o'clock to turn on this light um and I just did some household chores everyone in my house is still asleep um, except for the animals our dog sugar he was up when I got up he needed to go potty just crazy because he just went now because he is a basset hound I usually take his food and water away when it's bedtime um, by 10 30 at night this is because he will stay up and just gorge his food until he makes himself sick it's not healthy 
a lot of Basset hounds are really food motivated, so I take his water away um, and his food so he doesn't just gorge himself on it. Now, during the day, he has his food and his water and he can kind of free feed, but we still monitor the amount of food that he eats for his own health. We definitely don't need him to, to get sick. It's just not good for him. Um, I didn't pull his water last night. I guess I fell asleep without even thinking about it. And that boy, I let him to go out to go to the bathroom at 11.30 at night. And at 4.30 this in, or 4.30 a.m., excuse me, he was exploding. So, <sighs> we've had a busy day. Um, and, okay, so these are the squash. And I planted all of these out to be different varieties of squash. Some are the zephyr squash that I really, really love so much. Now, previously, I'm, I meant, I think I said Bob, but his name is actually Rob, um, with Johnny Seeds, who's actually the breeder for the squash plant, and I really like this squash, and when I gave some to my husband's boss, one of the first things he um, he said, I keep saying um a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> One of the things that he said that about the squash that he liked the most was the cool colors of that Zephyr squash. So that was really cool. But it seems that our absolute favorite squash as far as size and ease to grow are those are the Cozell squash. Those are one of our absolute favorites. Um, here down south in Texas, you see it labeled as calabasa squash a lot, which is just Spanish for pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin variety. It is a summer squash variety. Um, it's a type of zucchini squash, but it grows really well. A lot of people refer to it as Mexican squash. It's that grayish squash with the gray and green stripes really lovely really easy to grow there are times where they are the size of a full grown zucchini before the flower even falls off before they're even um pollinated so even if you're having poor pollination it can produce a lot of food for you i really enjoy that but the zephyr squash are those really cool squash they're yellow and then the ends are green but also sometimes instead of that they have like horizontal coloring where the top is yellow and the bottom is green and sometimes they are green with yellow stripes so there is a lot of variation there it would be cool just to keep experimenting with it and see what happens but it's one of my favorite squash as far as taste so far but it of course is not quite as productive as the other type of zucchini that I'm growing and then I'm just growing some nothing fancy saffron yellow squash it's a hybrid squash it's the one that has kind of a crook neck and some bumps on it and I don't think that I planted any more of those. I do need to check my seed start sheet because I keep pretty detailed notes about them just so I know exactly what I'm planting because if not, I will lose track of it. That happens to me. So it's something I really want to stay on top of and try to get better about. Now, this right here, these seeds kind of look like ochre seeds, but they're not. They're hibiscus seeds and these are all a roselle type of hibiscus. They get two to three feet in height on average, but from my experience, everything gets bigger than that. These would make some really good hibiscus tea, which is one of my favorite things to drink. It's also a really cool way to make like a Kool-Aid flavored juice, especially if you use the red variety of hibiscus. And on top of all of that, it makes a really great natural dye to add a little bit of that color to your icings. Um, for cookies, especially us, we like to make soft sugar cookies and that nice icing with maybe some cream cheese or a butter-based icing. So good and such a beautiful color. So I'm really excited about hibiscus. A bonus is that it was my husband's grandfather's, one of his favorite flowers to grow. So I know it's going to be special for my husband to have hibiscus in the yard. Um, and... It was something that my grandparents always enjoy growing, although they don't have a lot of hibiscus in their yard now. But there was a time where they did. I might actually give them a couple of those. 
And then right here, those in the very back, those are lemongrass seeds. Now, when I put these in here, it had a pretty low germination rate. And so I just went ahead and dumped the whole pack in. And what I'm doing with these seeds where I've dumped the whole packs in, which are these nine over here, I'm going to pluck them out and put them into individual cells as they get bigger. So that's my plan. I haven't started doing that yet because I do need more seed starter, which I'll probably wait until Thursday to get. I may get some this weekend, but likely wait till Thursday. And then I'll kind of pick them out and let them grow there. So these will be up potted quite a few times, but I thought that the lemongrass would have a lot worse germination rate than it did based off what the pack said, but it looks like they're growing incredibly well. It probably helps that this room is really warm from the heat lamp and being locked up. There is not AC turned on for this room, so it doesn't get cooled down at all. It stays a very warm and comfortable temperature for the baby turkeys. And I think that's also assisting these heat loving plants in growing really rapidly. Um, let's see. So this right here is Barry's Crazy Cherry and you can see a couple of them are starting to pop up already but not a lot. I wanted to plant that because I saw where they have 40 to 60 tomatoes on each cluster and I keep seeing people that complain that they planted two plants it was way too much for them and they don't have anything to do with them but I have a lot to do with these cherry type tomatoes um even grape tomatoes I can dehydrate them I eventually want to get a freeze dryer so I can powder them and when they're dehydrated I can put them in packets um, they make a really good snack. They're good on salads. They're good with chicken. Sun-dried tomato chicken is one of my absolute favorites, especially with some Italian-style dressing. So I think that we are going to have a lot of fun with these. I planted the whole packet, which I think was 30 seeds. So we'll see if they grow as well because I do struggle with growing tomatoes, but I am getting better now that I'm learning to pick varieties that work for our climate, that produce what we need produced and that are good in humid temperatures they do better in heat so now that i'm kind of learning to pick through those things and i'm giving in more to some more hybrids and not just heirlooms i'm finding out that it's working a little bit better for me i don't try to sacrifice taste like um one of my favorite tomatoes is San Marzano, so I got these Pisano tomatoes right here, which quite a bit have germinated. Um, this was a pack of 50, so I expect that this will be pretty much all the tomatoes I need between these two because I plan on canning them. I don't know if I'm going to grow any slicing tomatoes, to be honest. I grew these for canning, and I grew these um, crazy cherry tomatoes so that I could dehydrate them. Those are the plans and also for fresh eating and snacking. So these two should cover all of my tomato needs. As far as canning the tomatoes, because I have an empty deep freeze, what I plan to do as they produce, I won't be able to can them right away. But what I'm thinking is in order to get enough, I'll go ahead and I will core these tomatoes. I will score the tops of them. So cut a little X where I pull the core out. And I will just freeze all of them in bags. When I'm ready to can them, I'll pull them out. And because they've already been decored and scored, the skins, when they defrost, will just slide right off, making it really easy. These are supposed to be a really meaty tomato that produces extremely well. So I'm looking forward to that and hoping that in just a little bit of space, I can maximize my growth potential for tomatoes. I do not have a high tunnel. I do not have a greenhouse. I'm just starting to really get infrastructure in. We've lived here for seven years, guys. I say this all the time. This is not happening overnight. We are still working towards our goal. Life has definitely happened for us. Um, and it's just something you have to live with. I see a lot of people, they, you know, start homesteading immediately and they just dive right in. That's fine if you can handle that for us. It wasn't monetarily possible. And also, I would definitely have gotten burnt out. So I'm glad that we're starting slow and slowly adding more and more, which makes it where I get used to doing 
what I have to with what we have before I add more. And that's really nice in itself, let me tell you. Now these two over here are tomatillos. They're large green tomatillos. And the whole point of those is to be able to make a green sauce with them. I just tape them together to label them to keep them together so they didn't get mixed up and lose track of them. Uh, just kind of a lazy way of doing it, honestly, because I got tired of labeling all of the individual pots. In order to do so, you can see I just used painter's tape I had lying around in my black Sharpie and labeled all of them. And then whatever details I wanted to absolutely remember, I put on there. But I also have a seed chart, which I will show you right now. Okay, so this is my seed chart. Uh, my husband actually made this plant, this start sheet for me. And I recently watched a video with Whispering Willow Farms um, where Jill was using a type of software for it. And I don't even remember the software name, but I have considered trying that because that actually seems like it would work really well and help me kind of eliminate all of this information that I'm having to write on this spreadsheet. But the one thing that I've definitely included are the plant names, the start dates, and then these are the pots that I put them in. So it's kind of how I keep up with them and if that size worked well or not. All the times that I may pot them up because sometimes you have to transplant them several times before they're big enough to grow outside. This is especially true for things like tomatillos and tomatoes and even I prefer to up pot my squash at least once. And then... So these, like this one, this is how I started my onion sets in a Ziploc bag. And once they started well, then I planted them in soil. So this tells me when I transferred them to the soil and which tray I put in. I used that big flat 1020 tray. This is the date that I did it. And then this is where I transplanted them. I transplanted these in the squash bed. And this is the date that I transplanted some of those. So you can see some of them I potted up and some I transplanted directly in the garden to kind of see which one stood better. This is the temperature it was outside when I did so. These are all the different places that I planted the onions and these are where I got my onion starts from. And then you can see I've done this for everything. So everything shows like my Cozelle summer squash. This is the date that I started the seeds and the size pot. When I um, transplanted them into the larger pots and that's the date that I transplanted them outside and then I put where I transplanted them what the temperature was and then another place I transplanted them and then where I got the seeds from so if I really like seeds from a certain company I'll know where I got them from and I can purchase them from that location again sometimes I mix things up like here I got these two backwards so I just put arrows so it's not always the most organized but it works for me there is some more information I like to keep up with a little better like how much did it produce when did it start really producing when did I get that harvest for how long how much total but I don't have a skill and everything yet so I'm just slowly working towards that goal but that is the end goal for me and then you can see some of the things that I've planted so far the watermelon radishes guys I did not plant these when it was really cold and I kind of planted them underneath the squash I will not be doing that again I don't think that was a good idea they didn't produce bulbs I really do think because of how hot it is here that these watermelon radishes and pretty much all radishes will have to be grown in fall for us maybe in spring but spring is weird for us in the respect that most of our cold weather comes in february and march and then all of a sudden it's 80 something degrees so it's just a really weird time to try to figure out how to grow things and then occasionally it'll drop back down into freezing weather randomly in March so it makes it difficult to grow things like brassicas any type of radishes or root crops because the weather just goes back and forth back and forth which signifies for those things to bolt and it's a real pain 
to be honest. The only winter type vegetable I've had success really growing this time of year is our, our lettuce, but even then I got the Cimarron lettuce, which is a heat tolerant variety. You guys have seen it out there in the garden. I really love it. It's one of the best varieties I've ever had as far as storage, washability, uh, eating fresh, the size of the leaves. It's just the best lettuce I've ever had. I will definitely be growing that again. Uh, I know you're seeing a lot of shadows. That's my hands moving. I cannot talk without moving my hands. I just, I physically impossible for me. So right here you can see all the things that I've planted so far. And the Clay County Watermelon, I actually planted out by the potatoes. I plan on doing a separate video to show you everything going on outside because there's actually quite a bit of plants popping up out there which is really cool the gypsy pepper hybrid that's one of the ones that were in those um, nine trays that I planted all together but they haven't popped up same for the Genovese sweet basil it has not popped up the calendula guys those seeds were so weird I have to say I've never seen a seed look like that almost looked like a dehydrated millworm to me but they were really cool and they've already started popping up. So the Playtime mix has a lot of cream, orange and yellows, uh, calendula. So I thought that would be really cool to put in that triangular bed where the other calendula already is. And you can see lemongrass, tomatillos, so all of that stuff. Now, these were all started on 429, which let me check. And today it is the 5th of May. So that's how quickly they have grown. Six days and they have popped up and they're getting big and doing well. So some of those grew really, really quickly. And I want to remember that. I also want to show you guys that so you will not be surprised at how fast your plants grow and pop out. Now, I also like doing this because like the Clay County watermelons, it feels like an eternity since I planted them, but I only planted those seeds outside three days before I, I planted all of these seeds indoors. So I don't know why I'm getting so ahead of myself worried about how well they're producing because if they're already popping up outside, that's pretty good. And they're in an area where they can continue to grow and take over and it won't be in my way. And then, so you can see some of the places that I planted them. Very specific. I want to actually give all of these grow areas names, but I haven't gotten around to that. So that's probably a really cool thing that I'll be doing in the future is naming all of my grow beds so that I can... You know put them in by names or numbers whether it's color names flower names anything just something cool and fun so I'll be able to keep up with the different beds because as we add more it is a lot to keep up with especially with all of my responsibilities and that's just me being honest it can feel overwhelming at times so I think that about covers everything I really wanted to kind of document all of my seed starts and how they're doing for myself but also share that with you so you can kind of keep up with them on our journey through growing a garden this year and then see how I'm keeping up with things right now so this is what I'm using I have pretty much used the entire paper so I'll have to print out another one of these which I think he used Excel to make it I just told him what I needed and he kind of made it happen I am finding that I need more days uh, more days. I'm saying days because I see the 72 days over. I need more things, more spots, more information than I ever thought possible because there are so many things I want to keep track of. So I definitely think it's time for me to maybe switch to computer software and keep these charts as a backup, you know, put stuff on them and then also have the computer charts to make things a little bit more easy for myself because like I said, it can be really overwhelming, but I did want to kind of share this with you so that I can track it and you can also see how I'm doing this process, how it's working for me, and the things that I wish I would know that I'm learning 
and that I want to improve on. And hopefully that helps you guys out on your journey and maybe relieve some stress that I put myself through and you don't have to go through that yourself. So I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to kind of watch these videos and learn with me. I also greatly appreciate all the suggestions and information that everyone leaves and the questions. It's really nice to kind of build a relationship with people where we can discuss things that worked better for others or worked better for me and how those things can improve on and also learning information that none of us had available to ourselves or maybe something that helped you guys that could help me out or vice versa. So thank you guys for all of that. It's really nice to have people who have this experience or even people with questions asking their questions so I can share my knowledge and them sharing their knowledge and experience and how that information either worked or how they changed it up to work for them. So thank you guys for all of that. I hope you guys have a truly wonderful day and a great gardening season.